It's ironic. Boards recognise the importance of their role in relation to overseeing risk. Yet when you come to look at the origins of corporate failures, you find that it always points back to the board. With things like board skills and board's inability to see fundamental risks to the business regularly topping the bill. My firm has studied over 40 corporate crises affecting firms with the pre-crisis assets north of $20 trillion. We saw value shredded on a prodigious scale as reputations crashed. And it was the same causal factors which occurred time and time again. This happens because both classically trained risk professionals and boards both struggle to deal with an important class of risk, the risks which come from human behavior. This risk has been around as long as mankind, but risk management has not yet evolved the techniques to cope with it. Many of these risks lie hidden or taboo, so it's hardly surprising that boards are unaware that there is a large hole in the risk management system to which they're ultimately responsible. One important problem is unknown knowns. There are things that boards need to know, but they can't find out. An extreme example is fraud. But information flows are regularly blocked by risks from culture, incentives, leadership, and organizational complexity. These are all things which have their origins in the board. Then there are the board's skills. We found too many cases where non-executives and sometimes even executives lacked the know-how necessary to run the core of the business. And we also found boards which were so skewed that they lacked diversity of skills and experience. This makes boards riskier because without a collective know-how and strength of character, non-executives will be unable and perhaps unwilling to challenge executives when that becomes necessary, let alone be firm when firmness is needed. A lack of people skills is also problematic. Those skills are not just essential for challenging the board effectively. Organisations are powered by people, and far too little attention is given to the risks inherent in the way people interact with their environment, including their leaders, their colleagues, their teams, culture, incentives, and organisational structure. These are the areas which are the sources of behavioural and organisational risks. Since these risks begin with boards, the solution has to start with boards too. We think that boards need a new tool. This has to overcome the potentially disastrous consequences of our inability to see ourselves as others see us, what psychologists call cognitive biases. And it must be able to find and evaluate behavioral and organizational risks which are so often hidden or taboo. To meet this challenge, we recommend a regular board vulnerability evaluation. Its aim is to give boards a systematic and dispassionate view of board level risks and their potential consequences. It's important that it's independently facilitated in order to overcome those potentially lethal cognitive biases. Going far beyond board performance evaluation, the board vulnerability evaluation is designed to give the board a powerful incentive to prioritize and mitigate these potentially catastrophic risks. It's the kind of insight that gives the board foresight.